Hello, this is Chris ZL1 CVD. Uh, I picked up a, uh, a Grinnell or Grintec TR178B. This is a military transfer HF Manpack transceiver. Uh, when I purchased it, I just got the transceiver and the manual antenna tuner. Um, I've built the battery up, uh, 3D printed the case, and I've got cells in there as 6S 4P configuration. So this gives me a 12 hour, 12 amp hour. Uh, 25 volt battery for it. The rig is quite uh, unique in that it can the voltage range is right down to 12 volts right up to 32 volts which is really good. Um, at the lower voltage it only puts out 10 watts at uh, 24 volts or 25 volts it puts out uh, uh, 24 watts. So it's not a bad little man pack it's um, of course it's waterproof shock proof uh, can be flown at high altitudes it's um, a really rugged little device and it weighs some 5 kgs um, probably with the battery that I put on probably more closer to 7 kgs the whole pack uh, uses a standard uh, US military type handset so this is a standard US H250U uh, the antenna on these is a bit different this is um, uses the European uh, I think that's an M10 thread uh, I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely not the uh, your standard uh, UNF or whatever that the states use. Uh, but anyway, so what I wanted to show you is it's the first time I've had a transceiver that has these electronic countermeasures built in that um, that I could easily play with. Um, I have got other transceivers with them, but it's like um, with, you need a key generator to to program them into frequency hopping mode but this one you can do it by the front panel it's quite a simple transceiver to use um, but I'm still not entirely used to the user interface for it I need to do some more reading but like most amateurs I like to get stuck in as opposed to reading anyway we've got frequency hopping working and I thought I would show it to you so at the moment the radio is waiting for a, a, a call but what we want to what I want to do is if I can remember rightly uh, PTT2 I think that's it, PTT to send sync. So if we get if we get this and focus here on our DX10, we should be able to see it when I transmit. Just one, two, one, two. You can see it hopping up and down as I'm talking here. It sent the initially it sent the um, just one two one two one two one two one two one two. It sent a burst that you heard, a digital burst. Um, that's because it's um, that was telling it uh, the other transceivers nearby that um, or on the same net what the, uh, the the code was between the transceivers. But as you can see, as I'm talking here, this is single sideband and it's hopping up and down the frequency um, at a certain rate set by a, a code that it sent. Uh, initially before. Now we can manually set that code. Um, we'll go back here and we'll have a look again. So it says on the transceiver that it's hopping. Um, we can go, I don't know what that one is. So this is late entry, um, which is what I wanted. Um, so if you have a net which is already set up and you've got all the transceivers already communicating in the net and then say another soldier with this radio decides to join that net he's got the right codes and everything this is how he would join the net so we'd do this late entry thing and um, so we would then press transmit here and you'll see it sends the digital data and then the hopper it starts hopping and now when he talks it will hop the signals jumping all over the frequency now this, I haven't seen hopping this narrow before. It's only within a couple of hundred hertz of, or, or a couple of kilohertz of the um, the center frequency. I'm not sure if that's normal or if it's just because this has got the manual tuner on it. Um, a lot of transceivers that I've seen that do have hopping will hop over quite a wide frequency range. But you could see that if you were the enemy, it would be very, very hard to uh, to hone in on that signal. Anyway, that's all I uh, wanted to uh, uh, today today to talk about was uh, this little transceiver. Cheers.